morning, Harmony and Consolidate. It's Mr. Calvert again. Um, hope that you're having a good morning. I miss you all very much. Hope you're staying safe, practicing your social distancing, getting your work done. Um, today's artist of the day is Giuseppe Arcimboldo. Giuseppe Arcimboldo. So kind of a different name. He did live a long time ago. Um, he lived from 1527 to 1593. So he died about 430 years ago, somewhere in there. Um, so not alive anymore. And he was 67 when he passed away. And he comes from Milan, Italy, which is right here. Italy is kind of this little boot-shaped country that's orange. And he's kind of in the northern part of it. And we are right here on the map. Okay. And he was a painter. And he was pretty famous during his lifetime. But after he died, people kind of forgot about him, which... Um, doesn't always happen. I guess a lot of times if you're famous when you're alive, then you just kind of stay famous. But people kind of forgot about him after he passed away. And he kind of um, had a rebirth or he became famous again when we had a group of artists called the Surrealists. And the Surrealists came a few hundred years later, but the Surrealists oftentimes make these really weird, um, wild paintings that um, they're almost dreamlike, like things happen in their paintings that don't make sense. Um, so the Surrealists actually drew a lot of inspiration from uh, Giuseppe Arcimboldo and his paintings. So when we look at his paintings, if you stand a long ways away from his paintings, they actually just look like portraits of people. And that's what he was. He's a portrait artist. But when you get up close to them, you start to see that they're not really people, that they're actually um, things like fruits and vegetables, books, flowers, animals. Um, so he actually makes his portraits from just random objects that he would find. Okay, we see like strands of wheat in here. Um, there's a pear for his nose. I mean, there's a flower right here. Um, there's a big melon on his chest. So because of the way he placed these objects, they begin to look like people. But you don't really notice that from a long ways away. You kind of have to get closer to see those things. Sometimes he would choose... Um, just one object and he would do the whole entire picture of that. So this one's done in plants. So we see a lot of flowers. Um, there's some leaves over here on her shoulder as well. Um, notice how he used his highlights and shadows too. So highlight is that area where it's really bright, where the sun's hitting. And then shadows are obviously that kind of darker side. So he still included um, highlights and shadows to help make his people look um, lifelike or 3D. and gives them form. Other times he used kind of a mixing and matching of things. So here we see a lot of fruits, um, but there are, you know, here's looks like probably some wheat right here. We see some leaves, um, a pumpkin up here. Um, so he liked to sometimes mix and match his objects as well, um, rather than just sticking to one. Um, here we see some garlic around this man's um, wrists. We see lots of fruit and vegetables on him. We see as some grass-like things, or maybe it's stalks of celery making up the man's robes. Um, his beard's made from lettuce as well as his hair or hat. So kind of fun to see how uh, Giuseppe Arcimboldo used these different um, fruits and vegetables and books and animals and all kinds of different things to make his paintings rather than just painting a normal person, which is kind of cool. Um, I hope you guys learn uh, like learning about Giuseppe. Um, he is who your project is going to be based on, so make sure to check that out. And don't forget to send me pictures of your portraits that you make inspired by him. All right, bye.